Welcome to another Highland League Weekly Friday preview show. But there's no been Highland League games this weekend, so see you next week, I suppose. <laughs> there is, of course, a full card of GPH Builders Merchants Highland League Cup first round ties to discuss our main game this weekend that we'll have highlights and reaction from on Monday's Highland League Weekly at 7 pm. The Press and Journal is going to be Brora Rangers against Banks of D. It's a game or a match we filmed already. This season, last time Bro Rangers came out on top, interesting one this time around. It is very much so. Bro are obviously the cup holders um, up against a Banks of D side where you would say really this is their most important game of the season now because it's their last opportunity to potentially win some silverware this season and we know from their days in the junior ranks can they've been very used to winning silverware so if they were to go trophy list this season that might come as a, a shock to one or two folk so they'll be you know well up for it I mean Brora we know what they're all about when it comes to winning so I think it's got all the makings of a, a cup classic don't forget Banks of D really were on the end of a sore one in their previous trip when the cameras were there to Brora so they'll want to give a much better account of themselves and I think they'll, they will do that I expect a far more competitive tie for this one our secondary game is going to be Brecon City against Rothis from Glebe Park. This one intrigues me because Brecon, we know their priority is to win the Highland League and they're making a good fist of it. Get themselves back up into the Scottish League. How much do they care about progressing in the Highland League Cup? Could we see some changes? Rothis, meanwhile, last few weeks, last couple of months, back to the Rothis we're used to seeing. With the point you were making about Brechin, that was exactly what I was going to say, Ryan. That I th wondered if they might make one or two alterations because do they? I mean, they'll say they want to win every game as everyone does, but do they view the Highland League Cup as as important as the league? I'm not so sure. I think Rothis, you know, that if you'd be, if they'd been playing Rothis a month ago, you probably would have been predicting comfortable home win, but now don't think he can really make that prediction they are really found a bit of form look a threat at the top end of the park with Greg Morrison Matthias Mikado Aidan Wilson they're all in good form and the other thing which is becoming a bit of a, a trope on this show is uh, I will say this now is that they'll be well organised and they'll be hard to play against because these are these are the games that Ross, Ross Jack loves to sort of uh, Upset the apple aye, cart. Upset the, the apple cart and sort of throw a spanner in the works. By you've seen it, seen him do it plenty of times before. Sort of totally shutting down the opposition, and they might be able to do that again. And again, like I said, with Banks a D, it's last chance of silverware for Rothis this season, realistically. So it's when you factor all that in, I'd probably say in that regard, it's a bigger game for them than it is for Brecon, really. Devon Vale against Bucky Thistle, the next tie to discuss. I mean, always a feisty one. It's a tough All one for Devon Vale. It, 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 De Devon Vale Bucky is always a oh, keenly tasty, contested. Um, I could have been a good case made to take a camera out of that one, actually. Um, I expect fireworks a week later uh, <laughs> at Prince's Royal Park. Uh, you do have to fancy Bucky. I mean, they are so strong. And unlike Brecon, I think they would be looking to compete on all fronts and uh, I think that'll be reflected in Graham Stewart's team that goes out in Banff but the Vale it's a, it's a free hit for them a week off from the league but they're going to have to play really well to, get, to create a shock here I think. It's interesting because they play on Saturday and then they play again Wednesday in the Aberdeenshire Shield quarter final so you know not often in two cup games you see it landing like that's quite um Interesting, really. I mean, Devon Vale clearly start as underdogs, but if there's a can, if there's a day for a shock or whatever, it's first round of the League Cup, local derby. The factors are there, but one thing I think for Vale is important is Dane Ballard was missing last weekend up at Wick, as was Max Stewart, and those are two really important players for the Banthers going forward. If they were available. I'm not sure whether they will be or not at this stage, but Devon Vale will be hoping they are back because if they are, it adds a different dimension to their team. Fraserburgh against Locos. Again, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> both both sides wouldn't have been too happy with their performances at the weekend. Locos got a Tino win. Fraser Bird drew 1 1 with Forrest, but I think both teams were not at their best. We know Fraser Bird's best is probably better than Locos' best. We know that Locos want to be a team of Fraser Bird's standing right at the top of the table. How do you see this one going in the League Cup? This is interesting because it's another game between these two at Bellsley. I watched Fraser Bird beat Locos in penalties in the Aberdeenshire Cup, and then you had Locos go back in the league a couple of weeks later and beat the 10-man Baroque with two late goals. So I expect Fraserburgh will want to bounce back from mm -hmm. dropping two points at Forest and obviously progress in the cup for Locos. This is a huge one for them, um, as, as is what's been a common theme there. The cups are now their best chance, a silverware. And th this one, if Fraserburgh plays the can, I think they will, they will win the game, but Locos have I've done okay against Fraserburgh this season, so it's 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 a hard one to call, and just because of that, it's a big few days for Inverurie. I think potentially, I mean, we're in November, but potentially season-defining couple of games. Really, this game against Fraserburgh, and then they're at home to Huntley on Wednesday in the Aberdeenshire Shield quarter-final. If you win them both, suddenly can chance is still there to win two trophies, perhaps. If you're to lose, I mean, lose one, it's not a disaster. If you're to lose both, suddenly the season looks very different. I do think, I mean, Mark Cowie sort of questioned Fraserburgh's fight and their conviction last weekend. I would expect a response from them. And I think there's a still, if you speak to people at Fraserburgh, that losing with 10 men late on against Inveruri still really stings them and I think they would like to atone and this how we speak we've spoken about Fraser but I usually been a good cup team. They have now won the League Cup since two thousand and six. Only player still there that played then is Willie West remarkably. But I think it's a trophy that Fraser were desperate really to try and get their hands on because over the last five, six, seven years, you know, they've won everything else and I think I think Fact on all that in, I would just be edging towards Fraserburgh. On the subject of good cup teams for Martin United, we know how much silverware they've picked up in recent years. They travel to Huntley. Huntley gave Brora a decent game, only to then lose 3 1 on Saturday in the league. For Martin this season, have shown that a really good side under Stuart Anderson, even when they're not good, they find a way to win. Still, though, I feel like this one could potentially go either way with a slight sort of leaning towards for Martin. If it had been at home, I would have said for Martin, home advantage would count. But going to Christie Park's a tough one. Uh, it's especially as we're now getting to this this time of year, it's always a bit heavier going up at Christie Park. Uh, Do that very nicely, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Groundsman <laughs> wouldn't be happy with you, I would think. I'll but. do me band. <laughs> um, I, th I think for Martin might just edge it, but I can see this being a rip roarer. I think for Huntley, really, it's like they probably feel. I mean, you've got down it, but they probably feel they're due a result against a team like for Martin and those sort of sides. I mean, they've played. They've speaking about games again. They've played twice already in the league at Christie Park. For Martin came from behind, 1-2-1, one, one. I think Huntley ended up finishing with, with nine men that night and then in the Aberdeenshire Cup semi-final at North Lodge, there was really nothing between the sides at all, but for Martin got, an, got their early goal and went through to the final. So I think it wouldn't be a great surprise if you were to see Huntley potentially get a result, but clearly for Martin, where they are in the league, and also with their sort of cup record, I mean, final of Aberdeenshire, third round of the Scottish, can they they're good in these competitions, so you would have to start with them as favourites. The one thing is Huntley are the only team to take points off a of breaking, so they can do it. They can do it in a one-off game. It's a big shout. Uh, Forest, to me, they're one of the teams as well that you're thinking they're good enough to go all the way in this competition. They're at Keith this weekend. Keith, as we've seen in recent weeks, if they're going to win this tie, if they have a spell of dominance in the game, they've got to make it count, don't they? 
They do have to. One thing that will give Keith encouragement is they beat Forest. They're at home obviously this weekend, but they beat Forest two one at Mossett Park in the league earlier in the season. So, you know, it shows they can do it. And you'd think with the way Keith are playing and some of the chances they've created, whether it's in this game or further down the line, I think there's will come a day again where they could score three, four, five and sort of give somebody a bit of a going over. But well, remains to be seen again, not to sound like a broken record, but for the two of these sides, it's a massive day because if you get through again, keeps alive your the prospect of potentially winning something this season, which clearly for both clubs would be a big, big deal. Psychologically as well, when the league games come back. Lost mouth against Nairn County. This to me, it's a difficult one. This is this is a tight one for me. So Nairn obviously as we've discussed. The Sergeant. Yeah, the Sergeant. What, three home wins mm -hmm. in a row? In a row. Lossy Mouth. They have been up and down, but I mean, compared to last season, it's night and day in terms of how many points they've picked up it so, is. so far. It is, and Lossy are good at home. Lossy are very good at home. And I, that's why I, I, I lean towards Lossy, but only just, only just, because Nairn, Nairn seem to have the bit between their teeth. We filmed this one as well, you didn't we? You speak about psychology. Yeah. Lossy Mouth in the league thumped Nairn 5-1 and that was probably, I think, there was a few results but I think that was probably a result that led to Ronnie Sharp thinking it was time to uh, depart Station Park because he couldn't get what he was wanting out of the squad he had. But clearly I wouldn't expect a scoreline like that this time around because Steve, you know, Nairn have improved, they have come on since then on a decent run of form. but. Again, lo lossy at home, it just, they'll fan fancy the job and I, I do think though another cliche to bring out, first goal could be pivotal in that game. If lossy get it, they'll, I think it'll suit them down to the ground because they'll be compact defensively, they'll play long, play into channels and counter on Nairn. If Nairn get it and lossy have to come out a bit more, that's at times when they could be picked off. Okay, the last tie we have to discuss is Tariff United against Clatton Curran. Early kickoff this one, 2 p.m., reducing Tariff's chances, I suppose, of finding anything on the bus back <laughs> uh, on the road. But, I mean. <laughs> will, they, will they need a bus to go for the Hawks back to Tariff, will they? No, no, no. <laughs> but I think, I think there's probably a Tariff bus, isn't there, that goes back to oh, man, Aberdeen? Oh, there is a few. I, 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 would, I would think so. Uh, <laughs> we'll believe you, Ryan. <laughs> Tariff, safe to say, need a result, need a win, confidence booster, as well as, you know, progressing in the Cup. Clark, probably in the same boat, in a way. They are. Both it's sides like, needing a lift, it's, are they? It's funny, we've gone down every game here, and you, you find yourself, well, who will I pick? And you plump for a team, but by the end of saying something, <laughs> <laughs> you can almost talk yourself out of it, and, and they're rooting for the other side here, thinking, well, they've got a chance. They're both full of goals on their day. They are. They are. They are. Tariff are due a win, but Clark will be going there thinking, well, you're not getting it against us. So, I, honestly, I think this one goes all the way. Penalties, are, that wouldn't be a surprise. I think, again, we've seen Clark capable in cup competitions reach the final of the North of Scotland Cup. Um, it's interesting because when they played in the league at Grant Street, Tariff won 4 1 and by all accounts cruised it. Jordan McDonald was absolutely uh, seething after that game, I believe, so whether, again, like Sardi, I would be inclined to say you won't get a repeat of that, it would be pretty close either way, but I'd say just with home, home advantage, I would plump for Turriff to nick it by the odd goal. But Penalty, at least they've got the 2pm <laughs> kick-off, so if somebody's got a night out, it's, you know, <laughs> they're still on time. <laughs> anyway, that's all the ties. Discussed. Just a reminder that on Monday 7pm on the Press and Journal website we'll have highlights and reaction from Bro Rangers against Bank City at Dudgeon Park as well as highlights of Pekin City against Rothis from Glee Park. We'll see you then. <laughs>